Hey everyone, Jonathan Silva here. This time I'd like to take a basic journey into working with the HTTP action here in Power Automate. Now the purpose of this one is just to take a look at how simple it can be to go ahead and pass in a URI to go grab something from a website and utilize that here inside of Power Automate itself. So my end goal, what I really want to accomplish in this flow is to be able to go to this site here. This site, I've just gone to GitHub, gone to the official joke API here on GitHub and utilize this grab a random joke API right here. And I want to take this and whatever pops in whenever I go to this site, you can see I'll open it into another tab here like this and use this joke as like a, you know, a break the ice. It's a bit of a dad joke. You can see here, what is a vampire's favorite fruit? A blood orange, right? So it's a, it's a kind of a corny one, but what I'd like to do is be able to send in the setup and the punchline into Microsoft Teams and be able to control that utilizing our action here in Power Automate called HTTP. Now, before I go ahead and add that action, what I first need to do here is add an input into my trigger. As you can see here, I am using the new Copilot designer here for Power Automate as well. I'm gonna select add an input right here for my trigger. And then I'm gonna choose email because email will allow me to send this message to a specific person in Teams. In this case, I'll send it to myself. All right, and that's all we need is just to select the input for the email. And every time we go to run this flow, it is going to ask us for that email address to pass to. All right, so now we can go ahead and select our new action here, insert this action. And we are, of course, going to use HTTP. Now, with the HTTP action here, this is a premium connector here with Power Automate. So you will need to have that premium license associated with this and that developer account. Okay, but we also want to just go ahead and use the basic one in this case. You can see there are many, many to, to work with. We have HTTP and Swagger. You can use your webhook. Even with the general HTTP itself, we can go a little bit more advanced because what we do here with our HTTP is we pass in a URI into our flow. That URI, in this case, this is the one I'm going to be using, is going to allow us to go to a specific location. Then we can decide the method. What do we want to do with this URI? Do we want to post anything? Do we want to get something? Do we want to patch something or delete something? This is where you're going to decide what do you want to do with the data that is at the end of this connection. For us here, we're going to go ahead and use a get. Now, if you had more advanced connections, if there's specific headers that you need within this API or HTTP request, you can pass those in here. A lot of the times I'll use this, especially a little bit more advanced. Say I'm building out an API via Postman. I'm going to use that in here. I can pass in the headers and in the value of that headers right here. Any specified queries, I'll do that here as well in order to get that information. All right, so here we have the first stage. Just to make sure we have everything working the way we want, what I'm going to do is go ahead and save and test this right now just to make sure the data is exactly what we need. So I'll go ahead and save it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do a test. And I just wanna see the output here for this HTTP action. So I'll go ahead and select test. I'm gonna to have to pass in my email address here because that is definitely gonna be asked of me as we go in with our email because that was the input for our trigger. So I'll go ahead and use that just for this case. This is a, a demo account that I have. Select run and let's see what we get. All right, so it did run successful. Here is our trigger, our request. It's gone to this URI with a get of our method. We have a, a successful status code here. And you can see those are the headers. And generally, there it is, that's the body, okay? Because it is a random joke API, every time we connect into that URI, it's gonna give us a different body, it's a different message and joke. So in this case, you could see exactly, what did one wall say to the other wall? I'll meet you at the corner, right? Kind of corny again, but it works. What we need to do now is to be able to go ahead and access the setup and the punchline to send in a message. If I were to go in and add in another action here, what you'll notice is that we are not going to really get anything as far as for the output to consider to get that exact line here or the punchline itself. 
because our outputs, we are getting the whole body, but not the individual values that are being returned. That being the case, what we need to do is actually incorporate the parse JSON action here inside of this flow. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy out the outputs here and use this inside of that parse JSON action. So once I have it copied, again, you do have your little copy option here and you have a couple other cool features here within the new Copilot designer. I'm gonna go ahead and select edit and then add in another action after our request here to go ahead and parse out that JSON from the body. So I'll add an action and we'll go ahead and use our parse JSON data operation. All right, so let's go grab that. It's gonna be down in our data operations. So let's see if we can find it there. There it is, just had to add the space. Here it is, parse JSON. And what we wanna do is utilize our sample payload that I just taken from the body. So here in the, the dynamic content, we're gonna click in here, go ahead to our dynamic content action here, and we're gonna pass in the body. Notice we do get, those are the three outputs that we saw earlier, body, header, status code. We wanna pass in the body, and then use the sample payload we've just copied. So I'll select that here and paste what I've copied. There it is. What it's gonna do, it's gonna take this sample payload, pass that in, extract the individual values there that we can utilize. You can even see the data types associated with it as well. Now that we've done this with parse JSON, we can go ahead and make our posts. All right, so we have our steps. I'm gonna go ahead and add another one here. And this is gonna simply just the post that, that message, the setup here inside of Teams. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to Teams. And inside of Teams, we're gonna go ahead and let's hit see more here. We, should, we wanna have post message in a chat or a channel is where I'm going here. With this, this is where we can choose the post as the flow bot or as an individual post as the user if you'd like. I'm going to choose the flow bot right now. I'm going to post in a chat with the flow bot that will show up in the new workflow section here within Power Automate once it comes through. All right, so chat with flow bot. Then once you do that, the recipient here is going to be the email dynamic content for or that we've gathered here from the trigger. That's why we've added in the input so we can just type in who do we want to send this to and it'll go ahead and do that dynamically each time. So am I the recipient? I'm going to go ahead into my dynamic content and we're going to put in the email address. Then here in our message, we could just go ahead and pass in the setup of the joke. So I'm going to go back to my dynamic content here and then go ahead and you can see we have body type, body setup, body punchline, body ID. We're going to use these from the parse JSON. So we'll start with the setup and then we can go ahead and send in the punchline right after. Now for me, if I'm really going to do a joke here, I might want to wait a little bit before I do the same step once more. So I'll go ahead and select an action here. And my next action is just going to be a very simple uh, delay. And this delay that we're going to add in, will just go ahead and give us a, you know, maybe I'll wait, let's say five seconds and I'll do it. And it's not minutes, but I'll make sure they are seconds because five minutes would be pretty long here. And then we can go ahead and do the same action once more. Now, one of the things we know that we used to have within power automate here within our actions is we used to be able to copy the clipboard. It isn't out quite yet. We are hoping that it'll be something that'll be there in the future. So that means we're gonna have to do each and every step over once again. So I'm gonna go back in here and do the same post a message, but we're just gonna go ahead and send in the punchline rather than the setup. So I'll go ahead and add another action and we're gonna, we could just go to post message and see if we can get right to it. There it is, post message in chat or channel. And this will allow us to do the exact same thing. Post as a flow bot and a chat with the flow bot. We're gonna go ahead and pass in as our recipient the email address from our trigger that we've asked for. Here it is. And finally, the message. Instead of the setup, we're gonna go ahead and pass in the punchline. And there we are. That's it. It's a very basic request here with HTTP. 
but really the purpose of this was just to be able to show how simple it can be so long as you have that endpoint, so long as you know where you're going and what you're retrieving from when you get there. All right, so we can go ahead and save this and let's go ahead and test it, see what we get. Here's a test. I'll pass in that email address one more time. I could probably do it automatically as well, but I'll go ahead and just do it the full test here. We're gonna go ahead and make our connection to Teams. There's the email address and let's go ahead and run it. Let's see what we get. All right, flow is running. I'm gonna to go to Teams here. Oh, there's my question. How do you make a tissue dance? And we should be getting, there is the punchline right after you put a little boogie on it. Now, nah, nice again, once another dad joke there, but it shows how quick and easy this could be. So long as again, you know where you're going, how to get there and what you wanna do with the data that is there. Thanks for joining me here once again, working with Power Automate. In this case, just a very basic HTTP request and this one utilizing a bit of a dad joke, sending it to Teams.